Welcome back. It's still the breakfast. Time to look at what the papers say. Uh, today, of course, with analysis, uh, guest uh, J.D. Johnson is standing by. J.D. Johnson, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning, Kofi. All right. And um, good morning to you, Messi, and good morning to our viewers all over the world. All right. It's a Indeed. pleasure to be with you this Friday morning. Okay. Indeed, Mercy is uh, here as well. Uh, Mercy, good morning to you. Good morning, Kofi, and good morning, J.D. Johnson. Thank you for joining us. All right, uh, so we start off the conversation with, or we'll take a look at the Guardian newspaper. That would be the first uh, point of call for us. Voices, Troy Buhari's broadcast on the return of old 200 Naira notes. I cannot wait to share uh, Jida's thoughts on this one. Buhari, new cash policy, legacy weapon against insecurity and corruption and vote buying. Old Naira notes available for circulation mere 222 billion, 2.65 trillion naira to be destroyed. Circulation of 200 naira notes won't move the needle. Uh, you find out who's saying all of that. But Abi Amila Buhari's directive, a wanton disregard for the rule of law. Ganduje alleges plot to squatter election, install interim government. Broadcast is contemptuous of Supreme Court's order and you find compel APC leaders to release hoarded Naira notes. PDP tells Buhari, banks loses five billion to assault on facilities. Seventeen branches have been touched. Telecoms distance sales from failed financial transactions. Buhari's speech will have their consequences for the 2023 uh, poll. That's what the CDD wants. Countdown to the 2023 elections. Navigating tension soaked violence prone campaigns and uh, we'll just take this and move away from that don't postpone election bow to pressure cs ones INEC who ones as Marburg mpox spread across Africa that's another one human rights community polls uh, poll trips or tips to Nubu to win presidential election just before then, the CUNPP identifies attackers of uh, Gochinyar's resident. That's the much we can take this morning on The Guardian. All right, let's move over from The Guardian to The Nation newspaper uh, with the following headlines. Naira, Buhari under attack for flouting Supreme Court ruling. Uh, I think uh, there should be a Supreme Court order. Uh, Speaker Erufai, senior lawyers... Others fault president's decision on 200 old Naira notes as an affront. Um, Naira, Buhari under attack for flouting Supreme Court ruling. Okay. Uh, uh, window of settlement between G5 at Tiku Close, as we uh, gave that interview, I think, yesterday. Survey projects Tinubu to win presidential poll. Uh, 19,365 respondents in 36 states FCT involved, right? Uh, make them the survey they go. I think uh, Labour Party have also had their own survey. So everybody's surveying. I don't know why Atiku is not getting his as well. You know, maybe you and I should have a poll, Messi. <laughs> Ibarra stands still for Tinubu. You can see Mammoth crowd came out to see him. Or you all will vote equity, just as Mark in details, APC candidate. That's some of the headlines on the front page of The Nation. Well, I'll move away from the nation. Uh, we have the Punch newspaper. Now, one thing you need to know is that the Punch, over time, describes uh, President Muhammad Buhari as a major general retired. That's how the Punch, you know, addresses the president. And for you know certain reasons that they have said, they think that the president is still a dictator. That's their position. But on that uh, front page, you, you find better days are coming soon. Despair, disappointment after the president addresses uh, the nation. President illegalizes 1,000 naira, 500, and clash with Supreme Court uh, likely. Governors state dare Buhari and consider citizens to spend all notes. Governors and state dare Buhari and other citizens to spend the notes and mostly uh, you know, after the president had her broadcast yesterday, then, you know, Erufai had his uh, asking the president to go ahead and spend that. Naira scarcity wasn't at banks, ATMs, 
Nigerians buy Naira with Naira. So just after the presidential broadcast up until this morning, uh, I'm not even sure that the ATMs are, you know, giving out cash, right? Including 200 Naira notes. And uh, some people are asking, was that even really thought out? Was it really planned? Naira redesigned plot to scuttle elections, install interim government. That is what Erufa is quoted to say. I mean, it's also the same thing that you have with Fanny Kaya, the this statement. And some people are already calling for uh, his arrest. Their right is there, but I'm not sure I can take that. Please hand over illegal arms ammunition to NAS. Nigeria's oil output increases by 31 million barrels, OPEC is quoted to say. Uh, man says job loses, uh, there's a likely possibility of losing job according to economic crisis. Uh, that's what you find this morning on the Punch newspaper. Let's move on to the next paper. This time we have uh, Daily Trust. That's the final paper before our guest comes in. Um, Nara redesigned Buhari out to truncate democracy, Ganduji. Um, President counters su Supreme Court, insists on ban of old 500, 1,000 Nara reactions to his uh, speech to Nigerians yesterday, a broadcast. Uh, Nigerians recount uh, losses. Nationwide broadcast contempt of court, lawyers. They remain legal tender in Kaduna Air uh, Some of the uh, headlines, or the writers rather, to that particular headline. More from Daily Trust, uh, 404 106 security personnel, or 404,106 security personnel uh, for elections IGP. G5, WK forecloses reconciliation with a Tiku. Uh, forced abortion report, NH. RC, that's the Nigerian Human Rights Commission, Panel Grills, Military Rescues Women, Others. And uh, uh, unbundling railway will not lead to job losses. Minister, U.S. to return $954,000 Alamesia loot to Nigeria. Um, seven northern states owe NECO $2 billion register. Uh, some of the uh, stories there. Another one, this is quite sad. Pregnant woman dies in Kanu over payment alert delay. Second time I'm hearing something like that uh, this week. Uh, Jilly Johnson, the Naira is a hot topic on the front pages of the papers this morning. I want us to look at uh, what some of the lawyers are saying about um, the president's address and uh, his um, directive vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Supreme Court uh, um, decision or rather Supreme Court order. Um, after the last hearing, but before you go to that, and yeah, before you go to that, please give us your thoughts on the fact that people are going through stress, like this pregnant woman who has died in a Kano hospital because of a payment alert delay. Well, you guys, my address is that's what I was about interjecting you to start with, because we have to humanize this thing. This woman is just a sample of, of many that has happened. It's just one that has been reported. There are many cases that have not been reported. People that are disconnected from the media, people that are disconnected from the power centers and the state capital and the rest of it. This is what humanizes the story. It's, this is just unbelievable because of payment alert. And if, if you have ever gone to the hospital with the, way, with the way we operate our hospital system, the medical system in Nigeria, usually they require payment first. Even government hospital, they require payment first before patients are treated. It's unfortunate that I found ourselves in this situation, and it's unfortunate that those we have elected at various level are not are not are not are not bothered. They are not concerned. They are not concerned at all. All they are all concerned about is about the election. What will happen to this family or many 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 families that have had their loved ones taken away from them as a result of their inability to assess their own money to make payments for medical treatment. It's unfortunate. May the soul of this woman rest in perfect peace and many, many others like that. And may God grant every family that have suffered untold hardship as a result of this policy, the one loss or the other, the fortitude to bear the loss of their loved ones. It's unfortunate, but um, that's the reality. It's just a reflection. These people, whether the eyes of red speaker or the Senate president, you are not even had anything from the Senate president. Or oh, the governors, they are just far away from reality. Okay, so so um, there the are other, you know, um, 
attached headlines to this situation. What some papers are saying, lawyers are saying, you know, criticizing the president, uh, saying he's disobeying what the court has has um, ordered. And then Erufai, the yeah, Erufai telling his well, president to... We have said it over and over time, is that at Nigerians will be much more interested in what occupies the ministry, the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General for the Federation. It's based on interpretation. The moment the, the three governors went to court and the Attorney General issued a statement, granted, I told those that care to listen that I'm, I'm not too sure that government is going to obey this particular order to the latter that they stuck to their gun because it's whatever interpretation that the Attorney General gives to the President, that's what is stuck with. And what they've done is to look at the technicalities and play on technicalities. Outrightly, the, the President did not stop completely the old Naira notes. You saw what they did? They limited it to 200 Naira notes. So there is a loophole in every decision of the courts. There are loopholes and there are lacuna which you could exploit. And they studied that order and they saw a loophole which they could exploit because the president outrightly did not say the old currencies are no longer tender. What they did was to be economical with it, that 500 and 1,000 are not acceptable. A central bank will collect that and they will collect that at designated places. You could see the way they were playing around the technicalities. And that 200 Naira will be made available, uh, it's, still a leg, it's still a legal tender, and that the bank should make that available. So in what way would you say the president has slaughtered Supreme Court court? They played around it. They understood the, the loophole, and they played around it. And I've seen many, even lawyers, senior advocates, and then complain about this, not looking at the technicality in which the president exploited. As far as I'm concerned, he just played around the Supreme Court, there was no substantive declaration by the Supreme Court. Let the status quo ante remain. So there is still an opportunity for, 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 for the presidency or, or the CPN to still play around whatever decisions they are making. Even though that is contrary to public opinion, that is contrary to the expectation of the people. But legal interpretations, legal decision is different from public opinion. However, in democracy, it is required of those that are popular mandate to listen to the popular demands of the people. And we have seen this over the last seven years of this administration. And we, the media, also played a role in pandering to some of, some of the abuses that this present administration, or infractions that they have committed over time with respect to rule of law. We recall that the president, some years back, went to the National Conference of, National, of the Nigerian Bar Association, and he said, oh, ha that you know what, uh, national interest is bigger than the rule of law. That the rule, there is nothing like rule of law when it comes to national interest. And people are applauding, people are saying all of that. It's, it's clear, and you know you read the punch, where the punch took a position long time ago, that they will give, they will address the president with his military title, which is his title in any case. He was a former military head of state. And I, I have advocated that Nigeria is not a democracy. Now, the fact that you operate a civilian, is that the conduct election does not make you to be a democracy. Election is just one of the criteria for you to have a democracy. Independent judiciary, free and fair election, fundamental human rights, respect for, 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 for supremacy of the law on the plane by constitutionalism. Those are the indices of democracy. And if you use those indices to evaluate and measure a democracy. You agree with me that it's a civilian administration because we just had a transition from a military government to a civilian administration because the tendencies, the lack of respect for constitution, the lack of respect for public will, the lack of respect for public opinion is still evident and apparent in, 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 in our polity. The lack of respect for basic institutions. You see the judiciary is still operating all right, cannot uh, provide a check on the executive. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Before you come in, there's just a very quick question. Um, I mean, I think uh, there's been talk about, because you've talked about the uh, the fact that the Supreme Court said the status quo ante should be maintained. Um, there's this talk about also, people have pointed out to the fact that in cases of political nature, um, the Supreme Court, or the courts rather in Nigeria, 
have been uh, expected not to uh, give uh, orders on uh, uh, ex parte applications or to grant ex parte, ex parte applications. What about that? Well, you know, we also need to categorize that this issue could be resolved through political solution. And we advocated that there is need. Last week, Friday, there was, was the Council of State. What was the count? What was the advice of the Council of State to the president? The president stuck to his God. It was contrary to what the Council of State advised. And then, in fact, not contrary, it was a modified application. What we have seen is people exploiting the loophole in the system. And they are exploiting it to their advantage, for their own selfish interest, not to the interest of a Nigeria. Kofi, I don't have access to cash. Do you have access to cash? Nobody has access to cash. And there was a story the banks you, you spoke about. I told people, if you make transaction through your phone, you use the USD code. If it, if it fails, they remove 6 naira, 70 cover. Sometimes it's 10 naira. Now, if you have 1 million failed transaction, who pays for it? 10 naira times 1 million. How much is that? 10 naira times 20 million Nigerians using their electronic transfer. Who is paying for it? With your money and your inability to assess your money, you are even having a, a, a technological failure in terms of people don't have the infrastructure backup to ensure that you have cashless policy. And you are paying at both ends. You don't have access to your money. One, they are making deductions of the telco charges too. And the banks are also making their own 20 naira deduction. So, okay. we, so the policy, instead of solving problem, is putting pains and they fail to see reality because they, they have, I have said it, do you, have you ever collected the new Naira notes on the counter? The old one, the new, the meat, okay, let me, let me put it in better perspective. Have you ever collected meat Naira notes, the old one, in the, on the counter before? Have you ever seen such payments? No. Where do you get it? You see it at parties. It comes out through the back door. The same system still applies to this new one. That's why they are not paying it across the counter. People have, the central bank governor said, they've released also an amount of money. Where is this money? If we have this money in circulation, we'll not be complaining as we are complaining. But nobody can lay hold of the money because there is a racket that sells currency and they thrive under this atmosphere. They've not dealt with that particular problem. And then you are creating new problems. It's unfortunate. Okay. I'd like us to, you know, delve into the issue of uh, Erufai and his thoughts about the now redesigned policy as a plan to scuttle the elections and install interim government. You also probably would have seen, you know, the broadcast that he had shortly after the presidential broadcast yesterday, asking residents of Kaduna State to go ahead and spend the Naira, not just limited to 200, but, you know, across 500, 1,000, and what have you. I'd like you to share your thoughts on this, especially when there's also another school of thought that believes that the policy is meant to cop corruption and also in, in another way to help, uh, you know, the issue of vote buying, stop it to the barest minimum. Election is just one component part of our lives. We read the story of that woman. Election will come by, 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 by the end of May, March 9, the election will have come and gone. But the damages you have done with this policy will still stay with us. For example, those that have lost their loved ones will still stay. Um, it was Ganduji that said it was meant to be scuttled. Both Ganduji and, um, and the governor of Cardinal State made a um, pronouncement, contrary pronouncement to what the president said. Well, um, to a large extent, if we actually are practicing federal system of government, which is we are beginning to see the beauty of federal system of government. You have the federal government, then you have the state government. Now, the state government have control over their state with respect to what they think should obtain in their state. So if they are providing a platform or an avenue to ensure that uh, they will compensate their citizens, either by mopping up this currency and using their own state resources to, to support or to, to subsidize the citizen. There's nothing, there's nothing bad about it. But what I do not take to is the, is the, is the, confrontational, is the confrontational approach. And then what we have, we have also said from the onset is that APC is not a political party. I'm sorry to say this, because this policy is coming from a political party that you think that they should have been able to harmonize their thought. One, they've not been able to put in place 
uh, what is called their national their national and um, the their board of their board of trustees which you have all these major stakeholders in the party talking about the policies of the party it was just a platform that was created in 2013 to wrestle power and once they wrestle power we've seen that even from the same party people from the same party are speaking at brilliant forces you have discordant tunes coming from the party with respect to with respect to policy policy free talk because there's no the, there's there's no there's no structure structure within the party system to bring about those that have elected into public office for them to harmonize their thought and to come out with the current policy and they found out to the president too long and i've said it it is wrong for you in a democracy to call the president your father you wait you can't question your father so for many many years they've called the president baba 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 and in africa you don't question and i said it and i said it on here and i'm saying it again the president is not my father he's he's my servant he's elected to serve me the president is elected to serve the people but in a situation whereby you have people pandering to somebody that has been elected to be a public servant and giving him the title of a father but, then but you Jide, find it so hard but Jide, just before we close yeah. it down I i'd like to ask you do you believe that this policy is meant to you know truncate the 2033 elections and install an interim government well then you, you can you can you can you can come up with different types of theories because one you, you based on what has been made in the public domain you had what the INEC chairman said that they don't have access to fund now INEC would require a lot of logistics if i don't have access to fund if INEC don't have access to fund how would they mobilize um their resources for the election both resources human and 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 and, 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 and physical so and material how would they mobilize such such resources and then you had what the CSO said that INEC should not at any point in time postpone the election. We have had cases whereby people have raised the red flag that there are attempts to postpone the election. So once we postpone the election, what happens? Once we postpone the election, this is February, the end of this administration, the tenor, the end of the tenor for this administration is May 29th. So if you don't have election in February, if you don't have election in March, what happens? And by constitution. If there are crises constitutionally, you can extend the tenor of, a, of, of an administration by six months. You all you just need to do is to declare a state of emergency. And once you declare a state of emergency, you can extend the tenor of this administration by six months. It is a constitutional provision. But, it is not a justice interpretation. But today, there's been provision for special funds for, uh, you know, INEC. I mean, the CBN has said that if INEC wants fund, they can't be out of funds because they're going to make you know, a certain provision for INEC to have funds for logistics. So is, is that still the problem? And if we talk about postponement of the election, didn't we witness postponement of the elections in terms of shifting it for a week in 2019? It was for six weeks. It was, it was, you know there was a council of state meeting to that effect. There was a council of state meeting to that effect. And then and the council of state was called and at the end of the council of state, it was postponed. We had a council of state last week. That issue didn't come under consideration. The issue, in fact, it was said that the election would be held. As far as I'm concerned, uh, you, considering the, the 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 tension, the tense situation that we have presently, it will be it will be it, it will not be advisable for the election to be postponed. I can assure you, Messi. If we postpone the election, it will create crisis. We have seen that there are, there are a lot of there are a lot of even within the ruling party. There are uh, there are divergent groups having different. You see, you've you've seen you've seen governors accusing people in the presidency. Governors, the two of the governors that made broadcast, two of the governors that went to court to challenge this policy, were those that raised the issue with respect to this truncating of the election, not truncating of this election, and there were attempts by some elements within the presidency to ensure that their party lose the election. So, as far as I am concerned, these issues were, were not raised by you, and these issues were raised by major players and actors within the, within the polity. So, as the, the, you, you, you need to give a thought to what they are saying with respect, with respect to uh, attempt by some elements to truncate um, the... Don't forget that the last time we had a military head of state elected as the president. There were attempts to elongate his tenure with a third term. 
So you cannot, you can, and then the constitution we are using, the constitution we are using, the 1999 constitution, which was modified by the uh, 12 wise men led by Justice Nikitobi, was meant to perpetuate Abacha in power. It was, it was a constitution that was then the product of 1995 constituent assembly. So there are many loopholes and lacuna which you could exploit within that constitution to ensure that you have an elongation of tenor. So don't rule it out, mercy. Don't, okay. don't just rule it out. Did because you, the question you, you ask is, why, why we, now? We why is it now that you are doing this policy? Uh, you, we have to go, please. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, but but uh, uh, Gandhiji says Buhari is out to truncate democracy, front page of Daily Trust. And one wonders if um, a monetary policy, a monetary policy on its own, is enough to truncate democracy. Um, we'll see what happens as we go on. Uh, thank you very much for your time, sir. And the same government is planning censor after the election this year. <laughs> thank, right, you, thank you, Jim. Thank you, It's a monetary and policy. You, and then the politicians have who have been themselves also doing things to truncate democracy in their corner and now shouting that the president wants to tr truncate democracy simply by saying, let's have this money. It may not be working, but, but now they become uh, defenders of democracy overnight. Well, <laughs> they didn't fight for democracy before election. They are not fighting for democracy now. They are trying to protect themselves. Mercy. Eventually. Don't care about I mean, I like that so you are. When, when you I like that you are also exploring that, uh, all of these angles that they, uh, to this conversation. That the president is out to truncate democracy. Just a monetary policy. Okay. I mean, I think we there are many ways to do that. You know, without using a monetary policy, GD. Yeah, we have to go. Thank you so much for your time. Mercy. Well, that's the size of it. Thank you so much. Uh, we have been speaking with G.D. Johnson, who's been uh, sharing his thoughts on some of the issues right here on the papers. We'll definitely come through on Monday with uh, more interesting headlines on national dailies, all things being equal. We'll take a break. When we return, uh, Kofi, we're delving into our first conversation. Yes, indeed. We'll look at uh, exactly what's going on uh, with the um, Defense Research and Development Bureau Act of 2022. Please stay with us.